up so it's not going to be a fast picture but you can hear my voice and that's good um today we were looking at the market for beasts and the buying and selling of the system and abbott took us down this this edifying road of where we ought to be and he was um comparing his his fast um and his praying for 40 days and 40 nights to that temptation and um what he's telling me right now is that that temptation is a temptation for the soul it's satan wants the soul so just like how he tempted eve to eat the thing and just like how he tempted jesus to turn the rocks to um to bread you know it's a temptation for the soul he wants the soul it's something deep and he wants it so um wow okay so so I'm not a seamstress, okay? So, um, so in the tribulation, we will have that problem, and it's coming up very shortly. Because if you see the country stirring up with economic um, madness everywhere, and they want a system in place that works, right? They want a system that works, and they're gonna have it. They're gonna have it, but at the expense of what? At their soul. And you're going to have to decide at that point if your soul is worth any of the things that you think you need that is that you're able to put a price on. Your soul is priceless. And I was saying we cannot, we cannot put a price on a soul, but Satan knows that. He already knows that. That's why he's after the souls. And he's trying to get us caught up with the things of the world so we... We, we like Esau sell the blessing for a pot of lentils. I was also saying, um, I don't know, I just heard him say an exchange of soul. An exchange for soul. I'm a little bit tired. Okay, just a little bit. Um, Okay, so Eve exchanged paradise for a fruit. Or, well, the Bible says she ate the, ate of the fruit, right? She partook of the fruit. So, for one moment, or for something that will not last forever, just for a moment, she gave up the entire beautiful paradise that God had made for them without sickness and disease and death and sadness and everything else. And Esau, Esau for that one moment that his tummy said, girl, I'm hungry, you're going to die. <laughs> he told Jacob, what is my birthright worth? I'm going to die. So hunger can get to that point. But Esau just went hunting. Abba Jesus, he went out in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, he, he who is flesh that is subjected to only spirit. And that's what Abba wants us to get to that point. The whole thing is about aligning your, this, to him. Okay? So you got to do the things that pleases him, the things that, um, that he wants done, you got to do the things that he desires for us to even go up there. Because if we don't get it right, we're not going there. And greater is he inside of you than he who's outside. Now, if Jesus is inside, do you think you could do it? Of course you could do it, but it's not you doing it, it's him doing it. Remember the Bible says, um... It is not me who do the thing, but Christ has work in me, or Christ who lives in me, who's doing the work. Right, so he's the one who's busy at work. He's quickening our mind, our spirit. Remember, having a mind? He's quickening our heart, our mind, our spirit to align to him, who is God Almighty. He wants us to 
just like he made Adam and Eve and they were in sync with him and they loved him and fellowship with him and just um they didn't go against him they never rebelled against him you know Abba wants us to reach that same place he wants us in that same that exact um we're going to be newly improved though because we have well I don't know if you can say we're improved because Adam and Eve had no sin until they sinned yeah but we're gonna we're gonna actually have the no but they couldn't die either okay so we're gonna be exactly like them but God originally God's original design that's where this whole thing is going it's God's original design and um, Satan is trying his best to take our minds off of it off of the things above and put it around and he's trying to um, just for that one moment cause us to lose whatever it is whether it be well it's our soul he's after the devil comes to lie to kill and destroy and his sole purpose is to destroy souls why because we were made in the image and likeness of God and when we glorify him of course the devil does that but the, our very image we don't even have to do anything we just have to exist you want to get this in your spirit that you don't have to do anything wrong the fact that God made you Satan hates you okay so um, he's out to ruin us he's out to destroy us and he knows if he hurts us then who's he gonna hurt he's gonna hurt Abba father obviously he's gonna hurt Abba father and that's what he's after he's after um, hurting God he's after rebelling against everything that is called God remember the Bible says he opposes himself over everything that's called God so whatever you have safety and peace in Satan's about to get in it if you have peace and safety in Jesus he can't get in that but if you have peace and safety in the things that you're trusting of the world he will surely get into that and destroy it that's what he's there to do he's there to destroy it okay so Abba wants us to be aligned aligned to him even now the tribulation is not at its peak it's not it's not there yet it's not something that is too elaborate you know that like it's all over the news and oh you know this one's getting and this one's getting this one's getting and that one's beheaded and this one's that and this and no it's not like that yet Although in some parts in it, but it's not like that yet. Abba wants us in this time that is leading up to it. This is like passing through fire right now. It's just refining fire that's pulling us through to go to the great trip. And if he doesn't come back before, then guess what? We're going through the great tribulation. And the Bible says, I saw a, num a multitude that no man can number. They wash their robes in the Lamb's blood. Remember that? How did the Bible say the saints overcame the dragon? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Alright. So, the blood of the Lamb is our righteousness. It's our price that was paid in full. So, take a note that Abel Jesus, he died for the whole world, not some, but all. That's why the Bible says, Woe unto the earth and its inhabitants, for the dragon has come down having great love. Now, I'm supposed to be finding these scriptures, but my eyes can really stay open. Um, I'm just going through it, and maybe I can go through it after, or do the scripture verses after or something. I don't know. It'll take a whole different turn when I do the scripture verses. But, so that's why he's giving the scripture verses that you can line up, 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 line So, Abba says, Woe unto the earth and the sea, the earth and its inhabitants and the sea. For the dragon has come down having great wrath against the woman and her seed. So once you are walking in accordance with Christ, once you are the vessel, the earthly vessel that has a treasure, walking according to Christ 
succeed and eat you even more. It's not a good it's not good news. No, it's not good news at all. But see if it hits you even more. Hi, brother boy. Hi, sister Margaret. God bless you. So, um, the devil is after two things. Our soul, because he wants us tormented like he is. Because he's like the spoiled mad child. I don't know what else to say to comment. He's like a spoiled mad child who mad m-a-z mad crazy person because he had everything and he just went rebellious he got cast down and still hasn't learned his lesson and he got overcome well the, jesus overcame him and crushed his head and he still didn't learn his lesson Satan is like a rebellious mod child. He's crazy. And um, crazy people are, well, like that one. <laughs> I don't know what to say. He needs to be put into a straight jacket with, um, in a padded room or something. I don't know. Um, so Satan is after two things. He's after souls. He's after our, he's looking to take us out of this life. Yeah, and if we're here, because he's forming his system of um, one world government, where the church and the state become one, so that the state, that is the government, decides on the religion. That's what he's going at. Yeah, Satan wants to go after our souls that are destined for an eternity in heaven with Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, and. Because Jesus is his name, Yahweh, Yah, Yay. Okay, so not Yay. Well, I'm just celebrating my little party here, right? So Satan is after our souls that will last for eternity. He knows, just like he is a ministering spirit. God placed his God placed God's spirit inside of us. So that we became a living soul, and Satan knows that. He knows that there's a part of us that will last for eternity. This body is just going on for a little bit. This body is just going on, maybe 120 years max. But this body, um, this spirit inside, it returns to God who gives it, and it's going to stay there with Him, like a, uh, like a. Uh, okay, just an example. Of like a book on a shelf, like a, like a recording, yeah, like a recording on a, a security camera. The Bible says you will give account for every idle word you speak and every action you do on the day of judgment. That's why we ought to bring it out in the light and let the blood of Jesus cover it, okay? So Satan is after our souls because our spirit obviously is eternal. And he knows that. So if he causes a soul to rebel, he in a sense won, it, won that soul. Why? Because he is the prince of rebellion. He started the whole thing. He's the father of lies. He was a murderer from the very beginning. So Okay. Um I'm looking at some odd things there. Trump ex daughter, um, doctor or something. Looks like a crazy scientist. But, um, so Satan is after our souls because he knows on the day of judgment we're going to have to give account for everything we did and set everything that LeBlanc's blood has not covered and washed away and cast in the deepest ocean. Everything that we have not returned to over and over and over and over again. That we trample upon the blood of Jesus. Yeah? So, everything that we have returned to, we're going to have to give up count from it. Like a, a washed soul that runs back to wallow in the mud. Like a, a dog that eats its vomit. Um, so he's after our soul. And the next thing he's after, um, right, is worship. So he in his delusional crazy mind 
think that he can, if he gets, oh my goodness, you won't believe what I just saw. So I'm seeing President Trump here doing like, a, um, what is that? Jokes about pompous rounds at West Point. I'm going to try and get that after. And I see two secret service people on his side or whoever that is. And you know what I see? I see reptiles. Not cool. Oh, I'm going to check that out after. So anyway. Where am I, Papa? Okay. So Satan is, is after worship. He, in his delusional mind, thinks that he can get worship. And if he gets this amount of souls to follow after him in rebellion, that somehow... This is what he's thinking, okay? I was laughing. <laughs> somehow he thinks that God is going to give up the throne. Somehow he thinks that when the two-thirds of the angels see what's going on in heaven, from heaven, they look down and they see that they're going to join him. Somehow he thinks that he can bring humanity under a controllable number, so he's worshipped. He'll succeed, but it'll only be for three and a half years. It'll only be for 42 months. It's all about souls. That's why he wants you to take the mark. Remember, the mark of the beast is something that represents a system of rule. Okay? And the beast got its power from the what? The dragon, which is shaitan, which is Satan, the devil, rubbish man, crazy man, delusional fallen angel. So... He, what's the point of me saying that? Oh, he's trying to take away my words right now. I'm fighting. He, right, so he wants worship. He wants to be worshipped. He wants to be a God. That's why he exalts himself above everything that is called God. When will somebody exalt themselves above God? When they want to take the place of that thing that they're exalting, right? That's why there's so much competition in the earth. That's why everybody wants a higher rank. Everybody wants a higher status. Nobody's pleased with what they have. They want to go higher. Yeah, they must have the best, the best, the best, the best. Oh, better than that one, better than that one. See things like that delusional madman in his head. He's like, he wants... I'm seeing so many things on wrong there. Like, do you know, who's Emmett Flood? Flood? Do you know? The Holy Spirit is speaking to me right now. Like as I see these um, headlines, the Holy Spirit, Emmett Flood. What does that remind you of? The imminent rapture, the imminent flood, the sudden. Oh, what the Trump just said? Oh, okay, we'll, we'll check that out just now as well. Um, what was it right? So Satan wants to be worshipped. And when you, you only seek to go out over somebody out of one thing. I said one thing. You know what that one thing is? Jealousy. Okay, your mind's so small. Really? The Bible says where jealousy exists, there's every kind of evil. Okay? So, when jealousy entered into Satan... He lost his mind. He became a mad angel. <laughs> I call him the crazy angel. He's a crazy angel. He's crazy. He's mad. And he convinced, somehow, he convinced that one third of the angels to follow him because they might have been the lower ranking angels who were under, you know, some other rank of angels. So there are ranks of angels in different realms, and that's why we speak of. Every demon in every rank be cast down by the blood in general of those demons because they have, um, uh, they have different ranks. Okay, so when Satan when Satan rebelled and he convinced one third to follow, they were probably low ranking angels. So probably okay, but also some were some were high ranking angels because they said okay we could take this because they actually fought michael and god's angels and um they wanted to take the throne why 
the Satan began to look at himself and he became a delusional mad angel, crazy person. Woo, cray cray. So he, he looked at God on the throne. He looked at Jesus. Jesus is Yahweh. He looked at him, the great I am. And he might have been building the city of New Jerusalem with the other angels. He might have been helping. God made him beautiful. And he looked at himself sparkling. And he's like, well, look at me. I'm the most sexy thing in, on the, in the heavens. Yeah, look at me. Oh, mama. And, you know, he wanted to sit in the place of God. He said, well, remember something about our God? He's telling me now. <laughs> He's humble. He's beautiful. He runs things by love. He is merciful. He's compassionate. He is good. Uh, our God, when he came down, remember his own people did not esteem him. Why? He had no comeliness or beauty that they should desire him. If Satan was to, was to come down here, as I'm just saying, as a savior, do you know how he would come? Oh, glorious day. He coming down like, uh, in one big racket with a whole show. That is what he likes. He likes show. And that's another thing that God says. God says six things I hate, but seven are an abomination to me. One of them is this P word. Pride. God hates pride, and so this carry, I hate pride. So, what in the world was that? I rebuke it in the name of Jesus right now. I cast it down by the blood of Jesus. Let it fall now. Let it fall. Father, I set your hedge around this place, and everywhere that I am, Lord God, the fire is before and after me, through me, in me, and around me, hiding me from my enemies. Consecrating every part of this, this body right now. In Jesus' name, bless the God. Okay. So my curtains are drawn, and I see like a shadow watching outside there somewhere. So anyway, moving on. <sighs> Where was I? Right. So Satan is seeking worship. He wants to be God. Now... You ever heard, like, when you're in um, the first grade or whatever, and you're in school, and they do the mommy for a day, dad for a day, or they have, like, these practicals where you pretend to be your mom or your dad. So I was giving Satan a little, about this much of a chance to run his system, do your thing. It's like, I'm a just unrighteous God and I'm going to show you in fact I'm going to let you do your own thing so that when my creation sees what you're doing they will know why I'm on the throne see how smart that is so smart. I love you Papa so he um so right so Satan wants our souls and he wants worship and this is why he's bringing all of these things into tribulation, especially the buying and the selling part. Because, okay, there's one day I walk through the city. And everybody is like this. Yeah, yeah, how much of this and how much of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the stores and people are busy in and out to the malls. And not one person in the city is like this. Not one is looking up. Everybody's around. And the taxi men, they're looking for um, passengers. And the store people, they're looking to put people in their store. So there's a big announcement. I am moving here once. Jesus is Lord. Man. And I began to see Abba's face. I remember when I showed you the, um, the heart he did with the lamb on top. And his face was kind of turned away from the heart in this kind of like, ah. Uh, it was weird how he was turned away. And, um, right. 
So that was the day I'm talking about. And I just stood there in the chaos watching people like they're they're going nuts. It's like everybody was buying something. Everybody everybody had to buy something. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give and I'm selling this and gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give and you know, I was like, Whoa, what's going on? Nobody's looking up. And I stood there in the middle of the street, which was kind of crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. Okay, because I stood in the middle of the, the street, the road, and I was looking up because he was there and he caught my attention. And for a while, I just stood there and I just stared. And I'm like, Father, why are they looking up just once? Why can they see you? And there's a huge heart over the city with the lamb on it. This cute little lamb. And his face was like turning that way. Um, Abba's face, like a man on the side. And the lamb was hugging the heart. With lambs on the heart. And it brought, it brought me to such a strong realization of the things that we esteem above God. Because the market people were starting to sell. The people with the clothes starting to sell. People with um, furniture and, and, and appliances, they're starting to, everybody's like, oh, come and buy. And all it seemed to be about was money. And it became a scary sight to me. And um, it made me see where Satan really wants us focused on. And he has. He has at least 95% of the world following his system. In the spirit, I see 90. 90. Everybody's about you. Everybody. Oh, make it worse. Oh my goodness. Around Christmas. That's when chaos breaks loose. And Mother's Day and Valentine's and Father's Day and all these days. All these days. So what they have planned. They make it seem like it is something to do with us. But it's really what they have planned. They leaked Satan's system. And um, it's a sad day. Because this is where he wants our mind to be. When Abba wants us the opposite direction, he wants us focused on above. So we're supposed to be focused on evangelizing and the word of God and I'm just sharing the word, seeking this face, worship, all these things. We're supposed to be filling our spirit daily, daily, daily. This is food for the spirit man. And the spirit man needs to be strong. So if the hour comes upon him, that he must give account for the Lord as his salvation. The spirit man I'm talking about, yeah? Remember the Bible says, do not worry what you should say when they bring you in the synagogues and before the authorities and all that. Because he'll give you utterance on what to say. He'll tell you. You got to be channeled in to the spirit. You got to listen to his voice. And if you don't know how to listen to his voice, how are you going to hear him? You're not going to be able to hear him. And so, while God is leading us to him to listen to his voice, to know his voice, to know the things that he says, to test the things that he says, and see that it aligns. When you hear something in the spirit and you see that it aligns to the word of God in the context, man, it does something to your soul, your spirit, man, rejoices. It's like, yeah, that was such a sweet drink of living water. Give me more. And so God wants us in that direction. And Satan wants us in the other direction. He wants us seeking after the things. Things. I must have things. More things and more things and more things. No. Abba wants us channeled into him. We, he wants the fire part of him that is inside of us. That is his spirit. Don't you know that the spirit of God is inside of you? That's how you're breathing. That's how you're functioning. That's how you're able to um, um, tune, tune into him. 
That's how you're tuning into him. That's how you're able to hear his voice. That's where you're getting revelation. That's where you're getting vision. The spirit man knows God. But this outer shell is at enmity with God. The flesh is at enmity with God. Why? Because the flesh also is a mind. And the flesh has sensors. So it can see and smell and taste and hear and feel and, you know. So the spirit man, it's like looking at a blind man. And your natural eyes are saying, well, that guy's blind. He is, he's blind. And your spirit man is saying, no, he can see. That man can see. You see how the declaration of the spirit is different? So you're looking at that, um, that person and you're saying that man is blind. And it's obvious that you're going to be speaking the thing that is first apparent to you, but the spirit man is going, no, that man can see. Because it's declaring the things of God. It's calling things forth as though they were, even though they aren't. Because faith is the substance of things hope for the evidence of things not seen. Let's put it like that. Let's put it like that. Faith is sight, hope, Faith is the faith is the, yeah. Faith is sight, hope for, but the evidence of sight not seen. So blindness is there. So the the flesh, the fleshy part has to take a back seat, and the spirit man has to come and take lead, because the spirit man is led by what the spirit of God. He's showing me something funny. He's showing me a duck. A duck. Okay. A duck. <laughs> I have to laugh because first he was showing me fire, now he's showing me duck. I'm thinking roast duck. Um, can you forgive me for that? So he's showing me a mama duck and some duckling. Because in my mind, I was trying to. saying that okay come on and Jesus like you your work and your work will be. okay so in my in my mind I'm trying to come up with a thing that needs a bigger portion of the thing that it comes from right so he shows me first I see fire and I'm like okay so us to you but he shows me a duck and ducklings following it oh, what does that mean okay so when Abba made us he made this shell he made us in his perfect image and likeness, but then he gave us his ruach, his spirit. So after we became a living soul, right? So part of us is part of him. So the part of him that is in us knows to align to him. So the little piece that is in us knows the bigger piece that is him, right? So just like a duckling will follow a duck, because why? That's their mother. That's their. That's who they came from. When they hatch, they see him. They see her. Sorry, not him. Ah, <laughs> if the Drake hatches, well, yeah. But <laughs> oh, they see him. Uh, I'm talking about Abba now. Abba, you're the duck. <laughs> you're the duck. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Abba's the duck, and we're the duckling. I don't know why you showed me duck. But okay, so um, he's a fiery duck and we're the ducklings. So the ducklings know from where it came. It has a, an instinct almost. It's like your spirit man has an instinct. He knows the spiritual things of God. That's why when you channel in to the spirit, when you begin to walk in the spirit, you could speak things like that and they happen. They happen. Like blindness getting cured, like open doors, like supernatural fla favor flavors. Oh, am I, am I hungry? I'm not hungry. So supernatural favor, like um, financial blessings, breakthroughs, things happen. They just like you speak it, but you channel into 
Your spirit eye is speaking. Your flesh has taken the back seat. And now your spirit eye is aligned to mother duck. I mean, father duck. I, you know what I mean? I mean, Abba Father. The ducklings, they know who to follow. Because they came from that. They, they have the instinct. And when they're hatched, when they see them, when a baby is born, um, God says, I knew you from before you were in your mother's womb. So we got to turn that out of the window. Never mind that. When a baby is in the womb, oh wait, it's before. Okay. So when God has the idea, or when God says, okay, I'm going to create Carrie. And um, he, he, he begins to, immediately, he has a plan for me. Before I'm even in my mother's womb. And then when I come forth, it's like, yeah, Carrie's birthing now. Now it's time for her to fulfill the thing that I created her for, that her spirit that I placed inside, or that I, remember, spirit is an invisible thing, right? So the spirit that I, my spirit that is inside, but even before it was inside of her, it was a part of me, knows now that it's inside of her what I desire, what I want. So, I'm going to hit my eye, man. Not cool, not cool. I hope a mosquito didn't bite my eye. So, Ryan, why are you calling me right now? Okay. Um, so, the spirit that is a part of God that God didn't yet put into the baby carry knows, well, it's a part of God. So when it's now in the body, in the shell, now the shell can, it, the shell is just to operate in a sense that they can see. Why? Because, and this is where we went wrong. This is where we went wrong. Yes, Father, thanks for showing me this. Oh, now I feel so bad. So this is where we went wrong. Because we were placed here knowing Abba Father. And we're placed here as a demonstration of his spirit that oh okay, die. It's a mosquito that they broke. I really no. Not cool. I'm gonna fry you. A mosquito doesn't have the spirit of God, okay? I'm going to fry you. If I get you, I'm going to fry you, I promise. Okay, so that baby, just like the duckling that goes after the mama um, to learn to swim and learn to eat and, you know, just goes wherever the mama goes. Have you ever seen a brood of ducklings? They're so cute. But they, they walk just like the mother. If the mother goes this way, they go this way. If they go this way, they go this way. They, they follow her. Like, wherever she goes, they follow her. And, yeah, Grandpa had a lot of ducklings on the farm. And when he was har I don't know what to call that, harvesting. When he was harvesting the chicks, it would be like hundreds of them. And he would go after, this mother had like 25, that one had like, you know. And we would go and just pick them up in a handful, like ducklings. But it was hard kind of hard because when once they can run after the mother if she goes that way they go off that way if they go that way then that way and then in, they'll go under her and she'll cover them she'll hide them in the nest so um we're like that remember jesus said jerusalem jerusalem how long to gather you he's actually calling his people to be a consecrated people when he says Jerusalem, yes, Jerusalem in Israel is God's city. But when he calls Jerusalem, now that city is a consecrated place. But when he calls Jerusalem, he's calling out to us to come. Come and be consecrated to the Lord. Because even in that city, oh my goodness, they, they denied him. My, some people that crucified him. And now they're looking for him. 
as a lamb coming in, they're going to get the lion because the lamb came and they did not see him. Don't worry, God is going to open their eyes and um, they're going to know the Messiah. They're going to know, don't worry. Um, so Abba, Abba wants us, that whole thing about the babies and the ducks and the, the roasted duck. Oh, I'm not going to forget that for a little time. <laughs> My weakness thumbnail, a roasted duck. Um, oh, roasted, oh, he just said something serious to me. He said a roasted duck could be hellfire. That's not funny anymore. I'm done laughing. Um, because we eventually become a grown duck, just like the mommy duck or the daddy duck or whatever, the adult. That's what God wants us to be. That's why he said in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. As he is, we shall also be. Do you get it? So if you... Um, if you give in to um, the things of the flesh over God in that moment or in these moments, because these moments are doing one thing. You know what they're doing? Can you guess? These moments that we have in our lives are preparing us for that one moment that our soul stands before God to be judged. That's what these moments are. And for God to love the world, He is only begotten Son, that whosoever sort of believes in Him shall be to have a in life. Who say it in this way, as a revelation to me, for God so loved the world that He gave Himself. He came in the flesh and dwelt amongst His creation. Now, whosoever believed in Him, should not perish but have everlasting life being led by the spirit of him because he said in his word as many as are led by his spirit are sons and daughters of god are not will be or might be or may be are because remember the spirit that is him that was before even him putting the spirit in a baby before the baby was even implanted in a mother's womb. Now, when the spirit is in the baby, the baby knows when the baby's birthed, the, the spirit the spirit inside the baby is just waiting for the baby to eat and drink and grow up so he can actually function on his own, make his own choices. And that's where it becomes real. I don't know why he's showing me eight years old. Eight years old. What happened at eight years old, Father? He's showing me a little girl who used to kind of bully me around. And she pushed me hard on my chest. And it was the first time that I actually got that pain in my chest at eight years old. I don't know what that has to do with now, but I was always a quiet little child. I was, I was like, I was very, very quiet. And um, so when teenagers were doing things that teenagers do, I would be like quietly, you know, asking for permission to go even, um, like five minutes away with friends, like in school and stuff. I never got to. So I was like this really, really quiet, quiet child. And he just brought that in my life for some reason. Because he said, um... I didn't know him as my father. I knew him as my savior. It's right here in this room that I got the revelation of who he was. He showed me three spirit men. One, two, one, two here and one in front of me. And then he did this. I am. He brought two together and one in. And three of them inside. Right there. I remember it right in front of the TV. So, and it was a Sabbath day that he did that. And um, it was a beautiful, happy day. So this is where Abba wants us to to be. He wants us to be at that point of surrendering to the Spirit so that the things that Satan will bring at us in the tribulation cannot affect us, even if he thinks it will affect us, whether it be food, clothing, family. Man, I tell you, it's going to be a sad time for parents going to be a sad time for moms who have babies 
because they're going to take the children away from them and they're going to torture the parents to take the mark. And they might even kill the child. Of course, they'll kill the children and they'll kill the parent too. The devil comes to lie. There's no truth in what he's saying. Feel. He wants your eternity in heaven to go just like he knows he's going to be tormented. Kill. He wants to take you out of this life and us out of this life before we have a chance to repent, before we come under the blood, before we're filled and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Because he said, Jesus said in his word that after death is the judgment. Sorry. I was so rude. I just burped. Um, I'm struggling to stay awake. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying not to go and shower yet. Okay. Um, it's just me here. David told me that. <laughs> no, I used to, you know, I never used to really drink out of box, but whatever. So, um, right. So, the devil off. You ever saw something when you back it up in a corner and it has nowhere to go? And it can be whatever, it can be an animal, it can be a person, and it's just like that, like in a corner, like, like, stop, 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 please, 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 please. And you know, you're begging, you're in a corner. Satan wants his corner. And when he corners us from, the, he's going to do it from the four sides. That's all he is. He loves to come through the ways that are not the door. It's not of God. So it comes in. Um, he comes in different ways and he wants to surround us with the whole thing. So Abbot says, he said to us, do not worry what you should eat, drink, wear, or where you should sleep. Why? Because he said, aren't the fields good? Aren't the birds? Look how beautiful they are. Look at the lilies of the valley. Solomon in all his wisdom has not been arrayed like one of these. He said, how much more do I care for the things that you need? How much more will I provide for you? And it, it takes me off to Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, having the faith in God to stand. Where they said, um, our God is able to deliver us from the, the, the furnace from the king, wherever his name was, Nebuchadnezzar, I think, yeah. And even if he does not, even if we perish in the fire, still will not serve another God. That is decision making. Hello, you see a furnace heated up seven times hotter than usual, and someone's tossing you into the fire, what are you going to say? Oh no. Some people are going to scream. Some people are going to beg for mercy. If they see, if you see someone tossing their kids into the fire, that's why parents go ballistic. I've been there. I've been there with my daughter. And when they were injecting her, man, and she was crying, crying. I said, oh, she sounds so nice. Sounds like an angel when she's crying. I wanted to just try to let my child go, you know, just kind of like, just leave her alone. But if if you see someone purposely, and that's just, that's medical, I'm talking about purposely torturing, then something's going to move inside. But that's why Jesus said, you've got to know that you know. And you've got to share it with your family that they know. That when that time comes, when that time comes, you got to know that you know who your faith is in. Who is the author and finisher of your faith? you got to know who is greatly to be feared. If you fear death, then guess what? You eventually take the mark if you fear death. But if you don't, 
then it doesn't matter what they can do. And it's going to be a hard thing. It's not going to be easy. Nobody said it's going to be easy. It's going to be hard. That's why Abba says, run the race to win it. He says, I know you're tired. I know you have little strength left to the church of Philadelphia. I know you got my Bible on Um, he said, um, what did he say to the Church of Philadelphia? Um, that he will keep us from the hour of testing. And that's where people are so adamant on the rapture pre-trip, right? Because we're hoping for it. Everybody's hoping for it. Who doesn't want to go in the rapture with Abba in heaven and not have to go through the torment on the earth? But wait a minute. Jesus had to be tormented on earth for us. And without the tormenting, then he wouldn't have conquered death and hell. He said in his word, I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel him. I feel him. Oh, I feel him. Holy Spirit. Father. Father. Thank you for good name. Thank you, Father. Wow. Oh, cool. Wow. Shadahura Kama Shadaya. Lema Kehere. Ora Kama Shadai. Oh. <laughs> Everywhere there's skin, there's this pause race. Shoo. Holy Spirit, Father. Father. Oh, be glorified. Lifted in the highest. I hear him saying. You'll never die. Even if you die, you will live. You're going to get that in here somehow. If we have to die in persecution, in death sentences, for not taking the mark of the beast, if we have to die for the testimony of Christ, we've got to remember that we are seated in heavenly places with him. It is not the end. It is only the greater beginning. Because those who overcome are going to reign and rule with Jesus for a thousand years. If you think living to 120 is a lot, count a hot thousand years, please. Oh, happy day. And then, not just that, but forever, forever with Abba in his presence. That's where he wants us to be. Oh, I hear him saying, even though he dies, he shall live. Do you believe this? Yes. Yes, yes. Death may seem scary at some point. First thing, nobody wants to die. It's so final. Death goes out of your body. Pain comes on your body. But remember Stephen? Remember Stephen when he was stoned? What happened to Stephen? Do you remember what happened to Stephen? He said, I see my Lord. I see the Lord seated on the throne. He, his eyes were so unheavy and he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. How can you forgive somebody for killing you? Jesus did it on the cross. And that's what he called us to do. Forgive them. They don't know what they do. We pray that. We, we say it a lot of times, but I don't think it really goes in. That when we say it even, if we suffer like he suffered, then we shall also be glorified in him. These things that I'm saying, if you you wait until I do the sermon, maybe tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow, I can do it where I can actually give the um give the scripture verses and it's gonna go deeper than it's already going. Um 
it's going to be even more. But I know when I start to do that, and you take it to another twist, and then we end up talking about something else. But right now, we're talking about the market for these and the buying and the selling. And the buying and selling. What do we buy and sell? We buy food, we buy clothes, we buy animals, we buy um, things for our businesses, we buy medical, we buy what else? Water, we buy. Give me some things that we buy. A lot of things. You buy jewelry and all the fancy stuff. We pay. Hello. Uh oh. We pay the electricity bill. We pay for our mortgages, our rents, our cars. Um, what else? What am I leaving out? Oh, you know, you get the point, right? So. If our minds are focused on these things, having the best of the best, give me, and not even just the best, I just want to have enough to get by. But you don't have enough of this? Uh oh. It's going to be a bad day. Very, very bad day. So, the Bible says if you take the mark, you're going to burn in hell with Satan. God's not joking around with that rule. He is very, very serious because Satan was his trusted archangel, who was his trusted cherub that was actually covering, not an archangel, but yeah, who was Satan, Papa? He was a cherubim. He was covering the the throne of God. And he's looking at the throne. He's like, oh, well, I want to be that. You should be covering me. And God is not going to allow faithlessness in. He wants to see your loyalty. If you're here on the earth with a mandate, a calling, an inkling in your mind, a little tugging on your heart, if there's something that says Jesus is Lord and He's Savior, if there's something that says He's Savior of the world, if there's something that says I love, I love love, I love goodness. I, I hate what's going on in the world. If there's something that says, Shara hoba ha shara da, ema ke he shara da, oh ho ro kabo ho shara da, oh If there's something that says, Holy Spirit of Living God, if there's something that says, you love mercy, you love grace, you love the good things, you love to be humble and kind. You're gentle spirited. If there's something that tells you you're any one of these things, then your spirit mind is trying to wake you up and say, Hey, hey, hello. This is the part that God put in you before He put you in your mother's womb. This is the part, and this is the part that knows Him. So you're reacting to it. He's calling you. And you know the Bible says today if you hear his, the, the sound of his voice, don't harden your heart. That's the tug. That's the tug right there. And sometimes, well, I know people have gone to therapy for this. <laughs> they think they were going out to their minds. Until they realized it was the anointing coming upon them. And <laughs> it's kind of funny. But it is what it is. Um, I was saying today, if you hear his voice, harden up your heart because Satan's conditioning your mind to take the mark, to be fearful of death, to be fearful of him in that system. And God is conditioning our minds to be fearful of God in a reverent way, knowing that he holds all things. And Just choose him, whatever comes, knowing that he is more than able to resurrect our souls into our bodies again. I'm our spirit into he'll give our spirit into our body and we'll stand it before him at judgment. And he's placed the crown on our, our head. Remember the crown of life? Blessed is he who perseveres till the end, for he will receive the crown of life. That's what we want. We're, we're running the race for an imperishable crown. That's what we want. So, 
we got to take our minds off. So between now and Pentecost, which, what is the count? On Abba's calendar, it is, um, well, Passover started on the 30th. So that's the 14th day of Nisa. And how do you count Pentecost again? 50 days after, right? So we're counting 50 days after that the Lord's Pente um, Pentecost, or this Pentecost on God's calendar. Between then and now, don't worry, I'm doing it too. I've got bags and bags of clothing, and that's all basically I have. I have a little corner that is food. That was me and David and I went to sleep, and now it's just there. Okay. I have to burn a whole bunch of books, and um, these are not good books. These are books from the LDS church and stuff that we found when we were cleaning up. I thought I'd gotten rid of burn their hymn books and their Book of Mormon crap and all the rest of the crap. So, um, between now and Pentecost, I want you to go through your things, go through your house, go through your kitchen, go through your bedroom, go through your living room. And if there's something that you don't need, if there's something that you it's not a necessity. If there's something that Papa, will you help me? You're telling if you if you if there's something that is not a necessity and you don't need it and you have a lot of it, I want you to take it and give it away. Give it to somebody who doesn't have. Give it. Um this Holy Spirit Shakaro Karabashanda e Shadai. Leke behehere shadai. Okay. Okay. I get you. <laughs> okay. This is. Am I allowed to speak? Okay. This. The. Uh, this. He's very, very strong on this. I cannot even speak without feeling this. Okay. Pause. I command you to align to the word of God. The Father is doing it. From now to Pentecost, 50 days, okay? Well, from Passover, from 30th of April, 50 days. I'm going to do the counting and I'm going to put the date there. Never mind. But from now to, pa to Pentecost, I want you to go through your house. And if you don't have anything that you need, you don't need, and you know there's someone else in need of it, give it. Father, This is going to be your preparation for a special outpouring on the Lord's, on Pentecost, on the Lord's calendar. A special outpouring of the Spirit. And I was saying, um, like the rich man, remember when he said to the rich man, he said, what are you going to do with all these things you accumulate? And you're getting more? I'm going to build another storehouse, he said, for pride. I'm going to get a bigger room. I'm going to get a bigger top. Maybe I can just get a bigger table. Or whatever, whatever. And you know, we, we, we hear things today. And Abba said, you fool. This night, your soul will be required of you. Remember? Remember? Oh, we did that today. Mm -hmm. I think we did. The room and Lazarus. And... Lazarus was taken up into the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man into the flames of hell. God's word says, don't, don't put your trust in things, things, the abundance of things and receiving things and gaining things. The world does make a competition out of everything. The latest shoe, the latest clothes, the latest hairstyle, the latest this, the latest TV, the latest gadget, the computer, the phone, this, that, the other. Oh, you name it. It's become of one way or the other. The latest of whatever they can say. Whatever. Ooh, sorry. The latest of everything. Just to, to strike you. To strike your your fleshy man. Hey, I need that. That's a lot prettier. 
this phone, I don't want this phone. I want the gold one. This, I don't want this. I want the blue one. Oh, this one came out. I don't want the six. I want the seven. I don't want the five. I want the six. I don't want the the um this version. I want that version. And you see, they give us a kind of like they fire up because these things we can see. These things we can smell. These things we can hear. And touch and feel. This all five senses. And this is what walking in the spirit is is about. Denying. Basically denying your 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 five fleshy senses and leaning on the sixth sense, which is your spiritual sense. The Holy Spirit of the Living God. Okay? So beloved. Abba is conditioning our minds. I hope this was enjoyable to you. As it was to me I hope it was somehow edifying to you as it was to me I'm sorry I rub in my eyes I need to keep them open my eyelids will not stay open I need to go and shower and get to bed and um, he just wants us to be in that place of total assurance and not doubting because doubt is where the enemy enters doubt is where he enters and Abba doesn't want us to have doubt because He's going to use, Satan's going to use doubt on that day that he asks us to choose between our soul and whatever. And life, even, yeah? And Abba wants us to be in that place that Chadra, which is not in the world. They were men of God. So, Brother Boyd and Sister Jana and Brother Saul and Sister Margaret and everybody else who comes on. Um, let's just pray right now. Let's just thank God for His Word and um, be encouraged in Jesus' name. Okay, Abba's with us. Let's go, Father. We just thank you in your most precious and holy name, Jesus, that you are with us, that you'll never leave us or forsake us, that you've already made a way where there is no way like that. You already paved the path, and it's just us to walk according to your word father so we ask that you would hide this word in our hearts that we will not sin against you we ask for god that we would yield to you to the spirit of you father god and not to our flesh that we would as a father not place our treasures in the abundance of things but in you the portions of you the things that we use to glorify you lord god the the ways that we walk in you the renewing of our minds, the renewing of our hearts, Father, we just pray, Abba, Father, that we esteem this is our treasure, that we seek you to be to glorify you in the highest, that you be magnified in all things that we do and we see. And just like you gave us that demonstration of the ducklings, that call of duck, Father God, we want to be like them, Lord God. Wherever you go, we go. Whatever you do, we do. Whatever you say, we say. Give us the mind of Christ. Just like the word says, but we have the mind of Christ. We want to be re we want to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We want a clean heart and a right spirit. Father, prepare us on that day that even if the rapture doesn't happen before the great trip, that we could stand, having done all to stand, Father. That our faith Whatever we stand with in that moment will take us through and beyond into eternity with you, Jesus. Father, Parabo, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is none besides you. It's you we aim to spend eternity with and in. It's you we want to fellowship with. It's you we want to worship. All the days of our, our existence, whether it be in this body or the spirit body. We love you, our Father. We love you. We adore you. We worship you. In your holy and most precious name. In the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Abba Father Jesus, we love you. Amen and amen. Amen. Wow. So...
God bless you, beloved. Oh. I'm done. I'm going to, I have to go now and get myself ready and get like a few hours of sleep. And then wake up and go again in the morning. So tomorrow will be early. I don't know if I'll be on tomorrow, but I'll try. And I'll come back early. Heading to the top two again tomorrow. So we'll see what happens, okay? God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.